Hello again. This is uh, the intro to Minivan to the Station. Uh, this, I think, is one of the funniest Lincolnshire Standard stories um, from the early 1960s. Um, th these were brought about by uh, the fact that in our printing works at the Lincolnshire Standard, <coughs> behind the Boston offices was a large uh, pre-war uh, Goss, uh, American designed rotary printing press that, that frequently broke down. It was under huge stress every Thursday to print every edition of the Lincolnshire Standard from Louth, Sleaford, Boston, Skegness, whew, yeah, and, and various ed other editions. And of course, these all had to be done in sequence and sent out to the various offices uh, and newspaper sellers. Um, this is about the Sleaford Standard, which was running about the middle of the afternoon. Boston Standard was one of the last to be printed because we were in Boston. <laughs> and of course, it had not, hadn't got to go anywhere, but the others had to go and transport. Oh, well, yeah, Horncastle Standard as well, of course. That's a, another story. That's Lincolnshire Standard Tales number three. So um, the... Uh, the paper had to catch the train to Sleaford, <coughs> Sleaford Standard. And if I remember rightly, as I was just leaving the archway from behind the printing works out into Wide Bargate and about to hurtle off down Narrow Bargate or Straight Bargate into the marketplace, I could hear the train whistle. Um, so uh, we had to go over the town bridge and uh, this is before all the improvements and new town bridges and things and uh, down um, over the town bridge down through uh, Bridge Street down to the lights Bridge Street into West Street and then I found the road was dug up um, and there's manholes everywhere they seem to be you know feet high so this is all about the journey to the station and finally uh, as I approached the station, the reason I could actually get there in time was because the gates were closed, ready for the train to leave at the crossing at West Street. And I was able to overtake the line of traffic because there's nothing coming towards me. So I went down the last part of West Street on the right hand side of the road, past Scott and his garage, turned into station approach. And uh, um, as you get up to the station, at Boston you could you go past the posh porticos at the front and then there was an entrance onto the platform uh, and you could hurtle it, <laughs> the van you could take the van in down this arch uh, onto the platform and they were alongside the train and that's what happened <laughs> when we just made it but unfortunately the, the van nearly didn't make it back to the uh, to the newspaper and that's what was so funny <laughs> hello the boss didn't think so, but I don't think he ever knew about this one. This is one that was kept secret. So here we are, on with the story. Minivan to the Station. A story taken from It's a Rum Life, Book 2, Boston, 1960 to 1970. This is part of Tales from the Lingishire Standard. Looking back on these times now, it's difficult to see when I managed to devote the time to my basic job, when at any moment I was going to be asked to imitate Sterling Moss or Mike Hawthorne in a minivan. Another of the fairly frequent newspaper printing press breakdowns had occurred. The first I knew of it was when the works manager cons cornered my boss to request my services at short notice. Just to run the Sleaford Standard down to the station for the next train, it shouldn't take more than a few minutes. He sounded very convincing, but he had not yet found the van. By the time we had, the train departure was imminent. It was a bit more than a mile to the station, through the marketplace, round the Five Lamps roundabout, over the Old Town Bridge, through the traffic lights at the top of Bridge Street and down West Street. Everything went well for the first minute or two and then entering West Street everything changed. The road was dug up, or so it seemed. 
In front of me was a mess of manhole covers, gullies and potholes. The road was being resurfaced. I had to choose and quickly. Over the manholes that seemed to be everywhere and sticking up above everything else or slalom between them. I was still doing the maximum permitted 30 miles an hour and could virtually hear the train whistle as it was about to depart. Just half a mile to go and I daren't slacken my speed. I chose to go over the manholes. Then as the first one approached it seemed huge. My confidence bled faster than lightning and my foot touched the brakes perhaps a bit too strongly as the next thing was a tremendous grinding noise from between my feet. The van kept going and we were over and all the others seemed much smaller after that. I had the confidence not to brake anymore until the van was well onto the station platform. The newspapers caught the train but the van was not running too well on the return journey. A loud throaty noise came from under the bonnet and there was an oil slick following me down the road. Reporting back to the works manager with the good news that the papers had made it, I had also to impart my tale of woe. Take it straight round to the garage, he said. Not a word to a soul. I will telephone them that you're coming, he concluded. The van had gone in for a service, plus new sump and complete exhaust system that could be seen dragging along behind. There we are, that was the uh, <laughs> minivan to the station bit. Another uh, interesting tale of uh, my other little sideline jobs that I was asked to do. <laughs> we were a very small staff, you know, really, considering it was a, a quite a, a large circulation newspaper. Um, there wasn't any spare staff hanging around. Everybody had multiple jobs to do. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. And remember, if you uh, if you like it, please give us a like and think about subscribing to the channel. It all helps us. And if you want to actually read the story, then you can download It's a Rum Life Book two, Boston, nineteen sixty to nineteen seventy, from my website, and here is the uh, link to the website. Thanks for being with, being with us today, and until the next time, cheerio.